Sector Watchers, welcome to the show. This is the 177th episode of Sector Spotlight for Tuesday the 30th of May and I'm recording this on Monday the 29th of May. It's a bank holiday so it's an early night for me. My name is Julius de Kempenaar and I'm presenting to you from Amsterdam in the Netherlands. It is the last Tuesday of the month, which means that we're going to take a look at seasonality. A brief look back at what happened in the month of May based on seasonality and then quickly moving on to the S&P 500 and the individual sectors. Uh, we have a full show, so no time to waste. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Sector Spotlight. Before we start to take a look at the seasonal patterns for the coming month of June. I want to do a quick look back at what happened in May, which we are now actually finishing and we can see what happened. So in front of me is the seasonality chart for the S&P 500 and I always set it to 20 years. And you may notice that I've shifted it back one notch. And the reason for that is that it is now running <coughs> for the to the full year 2022. If I switch it to here, it takes 2023, but obviously only towards the month of May. So these are then calculated to, uh, for the, to, to the maximum of, of 2022, and these are 2023. So to make an, an even comparison, I always uh, put that slider one notch back. Uh, and this is what the chart will look like at the start of the year, or so what it looked like at the start of 2022. And when 2020, um, so, sorry, what it looked like at the start of 2023. And when, uh, when we end the year, um, I will shift it to the full year 2023 so that it looks ahead to 2024 based on all the years ending 2023. I hope that makes sense. Now, what happened is that uh, the month of May actually was expected to be outperforming the S&P 500. 75% uh, of the time over the last 20 years, that was what happened. The S&P closed higher than it opened. And the average gain was 0.4%. <clears throat> so um, that actually worked. Uh, if you look at the uh, chart of the S&P 500, and that's right here. And then you can see that the end. So this is the 1st of May. First few days were really bad. We went down, landed at support, and then started to work our way higher. And we're currently pushing towards the high of the month. Um, obviously, that's a little bit of a resistance area. And then there is a more pronounced resistance area at the uh, level of the August top, which is around 425, 426. So <clears throat> from that perspective, seasonality worked actually quite good. It was a good indication. Now, if you remember correctly, um, the last time we did the seasonality outlook uh, here on Sector Spotlight uh, for the month of May, we actually identified two sectors that were expecting to do really good and two sectors that were expected to do really bad. Uh, and the, the bad sectors, the ones that we were expecting to underperform, were materials and financials. And as you can see uh, here, financials is inside the lagging quadrant right here, picked up a little bit, and materials is right here underneath that. And if I identify them on the chart, then here is materials. And as you can see, the performance of materials was minus 5.4%. With the S&P up 1%, that means an underperformance of 6.4% for materials in four weeks' time. This goes back four weeks. We do the same for financials, then you can see that financials lost 3.2% in May. And compared to the S&P 500, that's an underperformance of 4.2%. <clears throat> so um, that seasonal pattern, that seasonal expectation actually worked out pretty well. And it did the same at the upside because um, the two sectors that we identified as being uh, uh, as having a positive expectation based on the seasonal patterns were technology and communication services. Well, technology was actually at the top of the list for May. It gained 9.2%, uh, which means an outperformance of a little over 8% versus the S&P 500. Communication services picked up 3.8%, <clears throat> which means an outperformance of 2.8% um, versus the S&P 500. So the seasonal expectations 
for the month of May actually worked out very, very well. Uh, let's see if we can find some alignment and find similar rotations for the coming month of June. Let's start with the outlook for the S&P itself. And I'm sticking with this uh, seasonality chart for the S&P 500 for now. If we look at the bar for June, it shows us that 60% of the time over the last 20 years, the S&P closed higher than it opened. That's a pretty good number. It's not fantastic. It's not the 75 or the 80% that we saw in April and in May, <clears throat> but it's actually still pretty decent. The average performance in the month of June, however, is minus 40 basis points. And that's interesting. So 60% of the time, the market closes higher than it opens, but the average performance is minus 40 basis points. What that tells me is that when the market declines, so in that 40% of the time, those declines are pretty significant. They're big enough to make the average performance a negative one, while 60% of the time the market closes higher. <clears throat> so um, it's either probably a mild gain in June or a pretty severe loss, big enough to drag the average below zero. That's something to keep in the back of your mind. Now also, we know the, the, the saying, um, sell in May and go away, but remember to come back in September. Now, when you look at this seasonality chart, <clears throat> that, that's not really what you see here. I mean, the months of June, July, August, I mean, July actually looks to be pretty good from a seasonal perspective, 75% of the time higher and 60 and 55 to actually all pretty much higher. They are above average higher, uh, which is not confirming that sell in May saying. And we can actually see that that seasonal pattern has shifted over the last few years. When I drag this <clears throat> 20, 20 years backwards, um, back to a start of um, 1990, then you can see sell in May go away because June, July, August, they are minus 0.4. This was 0.4 up. This was minus 0.6. This is minus 0.8. <clears throat> They're all relatively weak months. And then in September, from September onwards, it starts to pick up again with positive returns. And if you, you can see how that changed over time. So uh, that is something to keep in the back of your mind that it looks as if that seasonal pattern has shifted a little bit, especially with um, uh, the month of July actually being a very strong month over the last 20 years. <clears throat> now, if I, if I put this into perspective with the current chart of the S&P 500, and we just looked at it, or SPY, we just looked at it um, from the perspective over the month of May, but when we now expand, ex ex extrapolate that into the future, <clears throat> I think this chart actually looks pretty good. It looks pretty decent. We've got that series of higher highs and higher lows still in place. We're nowhere near overbought or oversold when you look at the RSI. That's, that's right moving it's like 60. It's hovering around 50, which is all good and all fine. We're pushing against a little resistance coming from that 19 May high, which is around 420. And then we've got the August 2022 high, which comes in uh, around 425. That's a little bit more of a resistance level. Now, if I compare that to what I just read from that seasonality chart, which says, <clears throat> or of which my conclusion or my interpretation is that it's either a mild gain or quite a significant loss. When I put that, when I project that on the current chart of the S&P 500, I think we're looking for a mild gain in the month of June. And that's based on that price pattern that's, that's continuing to move higher. Buyers are coming back at higher levels and we're, we're eyeing resistance around 25. So I wouldn't be surprised if in the next few weeks we see the market pushing higher, run into resistance around 425, 426, uh, maybe move a little bit more sideways and end the month of June slightly higher than where we started. 
obviously it's an interpretation. It's an interpretation based on seasonality and combining it with the current price action. <clears throat> if we break that 425, 426 resistance level, hey, great. That means we're probably moving high, higher, much faster. I do think that the downside is getting more and more protected by these higher lows, which will all in return come back as support in case of a decline. So let's now take a look at the seasonal expectations for the various sectors. I have slightly changed my layout, um, continuously try to improve the visualization and the layout of the slicing and the dicing. If you particularly like something or particularly not like something, please let us know in the comments below the video or via one of our channels. <clears throat> I'm very open to suggestions, but I always try to improve what I'm doing. So here's the table on the left. You've seen that before, and I've started to um, break that down into the offensive, defensive, and sensitive groups, what I do on a regular basis when we look at the current sector rotation from week to week as well. And on the right hand side, we've got the RRG with the tails for the various sectors so we can immediately compare the current rotation with the uh, seasonal expectations. And I've got all the charts for the various sectors open, which I can put then side by side and we can try to make up our mind of our expectations for the coming month of June. Now, we've already looked at the expectations for the S&P 500, so we can skip that. And let's dive right in to the group of offensive sectors. Now, the first one is materials. And you can see that <clears throat> it is still below 50. It's 45% of the time it outperformed. It managed to outperform the S&P 500. But the, um, the uh, so 65%, 55% of the time it was uh, underperforming. And that underperformance was 70 basis points, which is actually quite large for uh, a percentage, which is only 45, which is very close to 50. Now, if we look at the position of the material sector on the RRG, we can see that it is uh, still inside lagging <clears throat> and it's pushing further into it. So I'm quite confident, I'm quite, actually quite okay with, a, with an expectation for a further underperformance of the material sector going into June. And especially when you bring that back to the chart of uh, materials, then you can see how that raw uh, RS line is moving below support and it's pushing that red RS ratio line lower. And we're approaching uh, price support around 75. Um, and when that breaks, obviously that'll open up a, a lot more downside for the material sector. <clears throat> now remember, the chart of the S&P 500 that we just looked at, which was actually moving higher and pushing against resistance. Here we have the opposite. This is a chart that is moving lower and pushing against support with the risk of breaking. So the material sector um, is uh, probably in my underperformance book for the month of June. If we move to um, financials, then um, that 30% that we had in May, which worked so well, is gonna be even worse in the month of June, where only 25% of the time, the financial sector actually managed to outperform the S&P 500. Um, so 75% of the time it was underperforming, and that underperformance came out at minus 1.2 below the S&P 500. <clears throat> when we look at the financial sector tail, you see that it is picking up slightly, well inside the lagging quadrant, and at the lowest RS ratio reading. And if we bring that to the um, price chart, then we can see how financials definitely are in a downtrend from a relative perspective. You can see how it broke out of that slightly falling um, uh, trend channel on the relative strength chart. Tested it, tested former support as resistance and now is breaking below a previous low. And if you look at the price chart, <clears throat> and here also a previous low was tested at support. And the next decline, if it comes here to a roughly 30.50, if that breaks, then we got a new impulse lower from the price perspective, which is completely in line with the weak relative strength. That little hiccup in momentum here is because of that sideways move back up to that old support level now acting as resistance. <clears throat> and I don't think that that will um, hold up for very long. I expect that 
green line to actually rotate lower, which means that we will see the financial sector actually either start to move lower on the RS ratio scale again, or if it continues a little bit longer in rotation on the left hand side, what we usually see in very weak rotations. So the third one here is real estate, 55%, very close to 50% and 0.2% is not a fantastic return either. So we can probably skip this as being not so interesting. The tail here, the rotational point of view is pointing clearly into the direction of further underperformance is moving rapidly lower on the RS ratio scale. Uh, if we look at the price chart, <clears throat> then we can see how it is still well inside that falling trend channel, making lower lows and lower highs um, on the major scale here. Uh, and the next move seems to be back towards that support area, just, well, 33, 34, um, but it's not a fantastic move. So I'm going to keep that as a neutral, uh, the real estate sector. Uh, final sector inside the group of offensives is consumer discretionary. 40% of the time an outperformance, which means that 60% of the time it's an underperformer. And the average return in the month of June for consumer discretionary is minus 30 basis points. If we look at the tail for the discretionary sector on the RRG, uh, we can find it right here and it's well, moving lower, if you can see that it moved slightly to the right, not fantastic. Um, so there, there's not a clear message being sent here. 40 minus 0.3% with the tail just inside leading, but momentum predominantly moving lower. And if we look at the uh, price chart here for consumer discretionary, right here, then we actually see that it's in a broader trading range, but it's moving to the upside. Price seems to be breaking out with the next resistance area coming very, very closely up there. Uh, relative strength moving sideways, which is exactly what you see uh, in that rotation, very close to the benchmark. So consumer discretionary, I don't expect very much on either side for the month of June. So wrapping up that, that outlook for the group of offensives and that'll, that'll be dominated by underperformance for materials and financials, or at least that's what it looks like, with kind of neutral uh, performance for real estate and consumer discretionary, which leaves the offensive sector as, as a group as not very strong with uh, underperformance for materials and financials. Now let's move to the group of defensives. <clears throat> if we look at it here, then we've got utilities. Utilities are 60% of the time showed an outperformance and the average return for the month of June is 80 basis points. Now 60% isn't fantastic. 80% is 80 basis points is actually pretty good. So that's a mild positive outlook from a relative perspective for the group of, uh, for the utilities sector inside defensives. If we look at where utilities are hiding, they are inside the, <clears throat> they're just moving into the lagging quadrant. They're moving back into the lagging quadrant after a short rotation, um, which is uh, signaling a further underperformance for the utility sector, um, which is contradicting the outlook from a seasonal point of view. So here we have two contradicting readings. We've got um, uh, the seasonal outlook, which is mildly positive. Uh, we've got the RRG, the current rotation, which is actually looking quite negative. If we look at the price chart that belongs to that, <clears throat> that's right here, then you can see that this is way more in line with the rotation, which is actually pretty negative. And you can see that here, how that raw relative strength line is actually just dropped below support and is now accelerating lower, which will very likely push that tail of the utility sector deeper into the lagging quadrant um, with the price being at risk when it breaks below um, this price support zone, which is around 63 and a half. Um, that makes utilities from a seasonal perspective, mildly positive, 
but from a current rotation perspective, actually quite risky. <clears throat> so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna make a, a, a firm call on utilities here. I'm gonna let myself lead by utilities, uh, making it very unlikely that we're gonna see that outperformance that is expected based on the seasonals. If we look at consumer staples, uh, let me bring up the tail here that is making a similar rotation as we saw for utilities. 45% <clears throat> of the time outperformance, 55 uh, underperformance, which is very close to 50 and the expected return is 20 basis points. So there is not a very clear signal from this consumer staples sector from a seasonal perspective. And if we bring that to the price chart, then we can see that it is actually, uh, it peaked it's breaking below its um, previous low here that is signaling a further underperformance. <clears throat> and if we combine that with that rotation, it's actually a pretty negative outlook for the consumer staple sector. Uh, so a neutral seasonal reading, reading, but a pretty negative reading from current rotation for consumer staples. Now the odd one out here in this group of defensives is healthcare. 70% of the time, the sector outperformed the S&P 500 and the expected outperformance or the average outperformance was 90 basis points. And if we bring that to <clears throat> the current rotation, that's again pretty contradicting uh, with what we saw um, from a seasonal perspective because the tail moved up but it's now starting to roll over and move. It's actually hooking to the left, which is, means that there is a very rapid deterioration of this uh, sector going on. And if I bring that to the price chart, then you can see how that is moving sideways. But the, look at the relative here. That relative is sending a very strong signal, pushing the uh, healthcare tail further to the left on the RS ratio scale. So, um, I, am, I, I very much doubt whether that seasonal expectation is going to be met based on this current price chart. I don't think so. So this group of defensives is continuing to do what we uh, signaled the last few weeks. There's money rotating out of defense, um, which is in general what you would expect with a, a positive outlook for the market itself. Now let's wrap this up with the group of sensitive sectors and starting with uh, communication services. And as you can see here, from a seasonal perspective, there's not much going on. 53% is right in the middle and 0.1% is not a massive outperformance. If you look at the tail of communication services on the RRG, you can see that it's way to the right. Nothing special there because it's one of the strongest sectors um, and it's expected to continue doing that. Um, so from a seasonal perspective, in the month of June, not much going on. Um, but if we look at the price chart of communication services, then you can see how that ran into resistance. But if this aligns with that expectation from a seasonal perspective, we may see a little bit of a consolidation uh, of the communication services sector before continuing higher. Because you can see that in July, it starts starting to pick up again dip in August, but then you know, let's focus on this one here first. <clears throat> so things are um, neutral to positive for communication services uh, as long as it remains above 80. When it takes out that resistance, the current uptrend will very likely continue. But from a seasonal perspective, it's going to be a slow month for communication services, most likely. If you go to energy, then it's probably the same. That's 50%. That's a, that's a toss of a coin. And the average performance here is 0 .60, uh, 60 basis points. So if we bring energy here in the mix, you can see that it's inside lagging. Um, well, I mean, that's all fine and good. It had a very weak month of May. It's picking up a little bit. Um, 60 basis points over the S&P 500 with a 50-50 chance. Um, I don't think that is a tradable idea, tradable suggestion. And if we look at the price chart of energy, then that's right here. <clears throat> you can see that that is still in a sideways pattern, but it's, it's, it looks as if it's breaking that rising channel. And that relative strength line is moving in a slowly down, downward sloping channel. So not much to gain there either. So energy pretty neutral 
for the coming month of June. Now, technology is interesting because technology, 30% of the time has been outperforming, which means that 70% of the time it was underperforming the S&P 500 in the month of June. However, the outperformance, so this 30% of the time, managed to squeeze in a 10 basis point gain over the S&P 500 in only 30% of the time, which means that, again, what we saw um, with the S&P 500, um, it's either a, uh, a very strong outperformance or a mild underperformance because this 30% <coughs> of outperformance managed to squeeze in a positive return. So that sample is way lower than the 70% of underperformance and is still managing to squeeze out an outperformance. If you look at the tail, we all know where technology is right there in the leading quadrant. Um, I think that the 30% the, the, the of uh, outperformance, uh, I wouldn't bet against it with this type of tail and with this type of price chart where it's moving above resistance and it's heading for all-time highs uh, with resistance coming in at 175, especially when you see that July and August have 70% readings for the technology sector moving higher uh, with 0.8 and 0.7%. When that move comes early, and it looks like that, then we're in for a very strong move for the technology sector. So maybe a little pause, but don't bet against it because I don't think that the technology sector is taking a summer break here. And then finally, the industrial sector coming in at 45 and minus 60 basis points. If you look at the industrial sector, on the RRG, it's inside lagging, um, pointing to for a further uh, underperformance under the S&P 500. And if you look at the price chart here, it's moving sideways with relative strength breaking to new lows, which kind of confirms that expected underperformance, uh, but the price is still caught in that trading range uh, with lower highs coming in and support around 95. So wrapping it up, Probably the strongest move still for materials and financials to the downside. Um, and technology seems to be on a hiatus here, but the outlook for the next few months is actually very strong. Um, so all in all, no very strong outliers to the upside from a seasonal perspective. The odds are to the downside for materials and financials and for technology just holding up what it's already doing. And that wraps up the show for this week. I hope you enjoyed it and thank you for watching. Please remember, Sector Spotlight airs every Tuesday from 10.30 to 11 a.m. Eastern on Stock Charts Television and you can catch the replays on the YouTube channel or any of the on-demand channels. I'm looking forward to seeing you again next week, same time, same place.